I've got my mirrorless camera here. This is a Canon EOS R. It's great for stills and for video. One problem that mirrorless and DSLR cameras have is that they don't record more than 30 minutes at a time. You can stop and start and record more. Okay, there may be some out there that perhaps can, but for the most part, they don't. And that leads to a bit of a problem. What if you're recording something like a concert, a play, conference, lecture or something that might be more than 30 minutes and you don't want to stop and start. So it looks like I've got a monitor at the top here, but it's actually an HDMI recorder. It takes the HDMI signal from here and goes into here and I can record in the same as, or if not better quality on here. And I'm gonna switch this on in a moment. Now you can also connect it to computers like laptops, desktops that have HDMI out, tablets, phones, and so on. Anything that you can put an HDMI connector on. The thing is, is that it might not work if you're trying to record something off your satellite, cable, DVD, or Blu-ray, because it's got copy protection and it might stop it. So you probably can't do that. But let me just spin this around. So if I do, well, you see it's got a nice big battery on here, but I could connect that to external power, which is just great because it'd give you all day recording. And then I've got this, this is a hard drive. It's a solid state hard drive. It just slides off. And you can see it's quite robust, it's quite big. This is a 500 gigabyte one, and it's really kind of compact as well, and it's one that's recommended. This recorder here is made by a company called Atomos, and this is the Ninja 5, so it records high definition, also 4K. This camera does 4K here. And you get a lot on this. The great thing about these is that per gigabyte, they're cheaper than memory cards and also a bit more robust as well. So I can easily just slide that on. So let's just spin that back here. And you can see that it fits neatly on the top. It's fairly compact, so it fits in the camera bag really well. Let's just switch it on. I just press that over there. I've got it connected with this kind of cold shoe thing that goes on top of the camera, but you can get other sorts of things as well. This is made by small rig, it was relatively cheap. And I got it and put it on the top like that. So you can see it's now got this image, although it's just pointing more or less at the wall, which is a bit unfortunate. But anyway, as you can see, bigger screen, which is much easier on the eye. You can also check things better. You can see whether things are in focus a bit more. You can do things like zoom in, so you can magnify it without affecting the recording. So there you go, and it's just connected by this cable. You can get longer and shorter cables. So maybe a shorter cable would be useful here. But you can also get longer cables. So if you want someone else to watch it and so on. One thing I do, by the way, when I'm recording things like conferences or lectures, I have another one of these and I connect it up. As I said, it's got the HDMI connector and I record that separately. Then I can marry them up later. So it records sound. I can plug in a microphone and I can use that to synchronize that together. So it's compact. Now, the other advantage of this is that because this isn't recording, it's not getting hot, it's not using up the battery power here. Now, there has been talk of some cameras getting hot and overheating, but you're using up the power. Now, this camera, I do actually have a connector that I can put an external power supply on it, so that can keep going. But, you know, more cables, you've got to look out for that kind of thing. You can record on both at the same time. So if you've got a camcorder, this is a good backup as well and I, I do do that when I'm using a uh, camcorder too. So that's just useful. So it's not using as much battery power on here. Make sure that when you've got this going that you want this to have it so that it, the power save doesn't come on and then switch off. So I set that to disable. You need to find that out on your camera. So that's the could be under the eco settings or power saving settings. You just need to watch out for that. And this is good, I get a better view of it, more people can look over my shoulder if necessary and see what's going on there. So to record, all I need to do is just tap here, that's the record button just there. And then if I stop it, I can just do that. I can, if there was sound coming through here, I would see that and I could monitor that as well. Another great thing is how quickly you can play back on here. So if I just hit play, it's gonna play that back that I just recorded and you could hear what it's doing as well and I'm just going to stop that but if I tap at the top here I can see all the other files that I've got so I can easily access them just by 
pressing here and away we go. So let's just do that. And you can see it was just a performance that I was about to record there. Now, one of the things about this is, as I said, it's got a lot of storage on here as well. So let's just get that back to here. And it records in all sorts of formats as well, such as ProRes, which is a good quality format. If your camera supports RAW, which is very high quality, then it will do that. But they recently did an upgrade on this particular model that allows me to record in H.265. That's a much more compressed but good quality video. So to give you an example, I recorded a play that was about one hour and 20 minutes long and it used about 150 gigabytes. If I was doing the same thing with the H.265, it would only use about 15 or 16 gigabytes. That's about a tenth of the size. Now that could vary depending on what you're recording. But you can easily do that by just coming into here and going into uh, your record here and you can see how much remaining space I've got. Now I've got a lot of recording here, it's in ProRes. I've already got a lot on the hard drive that is. So I can change the quality, 422 is high quality, high quality again for, gives me 46 minutes, LT is the lower quality but still good quality. However, there are other formats. Let me just go to the H.265, which you can see there. It's got the low quality version, but you can see it's telling me here 99 hours. Well, actually, it's coming up 100. Let's just change that to high quality. That's an awful lot of space. That's a lot of recording. And it's really quite useful. When I'm done, I can just click on confirm. So the difference is between something like ProRes and ProRes RAW and H.265 is the ProRes allows you to adjust things more afterwards, such as exposure, color, and so on. But if you're shooting something very long, the long duration, then H.265 is better, but you don't get the opportunity to do as much grading, adjusting the exposure and color afterwards. But then if you're filming a conference and you get that right at the start, people are not so concerned about the exactness of the color as they would be for something that's perhaps broadcast such as an interview, documentary, drama, comedy, you name it. So there you have it. This is a very handy little device to have. And as you can see, as I said, it just fits easily in the bag. I can battery power it or I can run it off an external battery. So there you have it, a great bit of kit to add to your bag. As I said, this is the Atomos Ninja 5. I'll put links below. There are other brands, there are other models. You get models that are bigger as well. But as you can see, this screen size, it does help and it gets you around the 30 minute limit. If you do like this, please do like, share and subscribe.